When the Shadows of Evil trailer first dropped, I honestly wasn't that impressed. I was excited that Treyarch was finally bringing back zombies after it hadn't been in since Black Ops 2, but I wasn't that impressed. It looked cool, but it didn't look amazing. So once the map actually came out and we started to play, basically off the bat, I hated Shadows of Evil. I absolutely despised playing it, um, and I just thought it was very terrible, and I just had nothing I liked about it. So it really gave me a bad feeling for zombies, and I really just wanted to play the giant was all. I didn't care much for Shadows of Evil. So basically then, um, we started playing with friends and stuff like that. We started going through it, and we started. I started learning stuff. And my friends were showing me these different ways of, you could make these swords, and I was like, swords and zombies? And going through all this different stuff, making the wonder weapon, like the Apothecan Servant, all this different stuff. And so one day I decided, you know what, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to learn Shadows of Evil. So basically, I start going through every little thing from the shield all the way up to the Civil Protector, Apothecan Servant, swords, upgrading the swords, all that cool stuff. I went through everything. I wanted to know that map. And after kind of going through, I figured it out. I figured it out and I memorized it. And basically, from there on, I love Shadows of Evil. Shadows of Evil takes place in the fictional Morgue City, which basically is inspired by either New Orleans or Chicago, and some even say New York. It kind of depends on. It's not a real city though, and it's just one that is designed out of the other three. And basically they're put into this Morgue City that is taken over by zombies. Um, basically they all had their different jobs and their different special things they did there, but now it is taken over by zombies and they have the mark of the beast on their hands so within shadows of evil essentially the shadow man has taken over and you need to kind of defeat the shadow man and uh, go from there and get the summoning key so basically after the easter egg you have a very amazing cutscene to where when they get the summoning key after defeating the shadow man R dr edward richthofen takes it and that's kind of just the storyline perspective of it but I want to go into the detail of why I love this map so much and why I think it is the most amazing map in Call of Duty Zombies. Basically, just off the bat, the feeling of the map is so cool. You have these new characters, which were a one-time, uh, they basically were in the map one time. Uh, and by map, I mean they're basically in Black Ops 3 one time or the whole storyline one time. And within this, it just starts off as that cool vibe. You start off with that blood, Bloodhound pistol, which is basically a small revolver. And as you just start going through, basically when you enter these three districts, you either have the can it, Basically when you enter these three districts, you either have an option to go to the Canales district, the Footlight district, or the Waterfront district. And each district essentially has a different theme towards the different character you're playing with and I'm not going to go into all of that but let's just say one's a boxer um, Floyd Campbell so his is you can go down you can go into the boxing ring and you'll have to do his ritual there um, it's kind of designed to where uh, it has like a mob of the dead type uh, when you use the beast mode it's essentially the purgatory mode from mob of the dead where you basically have to go in shock um, that's kind of exactly where that came from and this does, if I mention, takes place in the exact same universe as Mob of the Dead, as a lot of the quotes are um, not really shots at the Mob of the Dead characters, but they just say stuff about like Finn O'Leary's whiskey and just different stuff like that to where it really connect the maps together, which I think is very cool. And obviously, it's just uh, all together, so they try to do the different shots just so it's not like a full connection, but there's just a tie-ins to where you know that they're in the same universe. Once you finish the main ritual, which is essentially going to each different uh, specific location and doing a ritual, which is uh, essentially, I would I would think of it as like in Origins, where you'd go to the generators and do the uh, power form, but in Shadows of Evil, you need to get each um, special item out of a box or a crate, and you need to bring it into this ritual circle, and you need to do the ritual. Um, when you do the ritual, keepers will come out and they will try to kill you, so you have to fight them off while you're doing this ritual and after that it leads once you do the four rituals into the rift which essentially then you do a big um, final ritual which will give you points and then throw in a margua. Leading on to the margua, the margua is a three-headed monster that chases you around and he will slam you to down you uh, basically slamming his hands on the ground and he has three heads and basically when the heads open you need to shoot the yellow spot inside to take out his heads and need to take out all of his heads and that will kill the Margua. So with that, 
a very cool boss. Um, it comes about every, I think, three to four rounds, so he definitely can be a problem for you. But that's what makes the map fun, and it definitely gives you a challenge there. So, um, another thing talking about bosses is this map is very much wide ranged with different uh, different types of zombies. I mean, we have the normal zombie, which that's the main zombie, but then we also have the meatball round, and we also have the B round. Um, so you have these different rounds, all essentially being the dog rounds, and then the Margos will just randomly come at the different points of say doing a step in the rituals to pack a bunch or just uh, roundly so with that um, lots of cool different types of things but honestly guys I'm just giving you the feel of the map right now let's jump in to the weapons and stuff like that on this map so basically the box is honestly it's pretty um, it's pretty basic there's nothing amazing in this box um, besides you have replaced is the symbol monkeys with the little arnies Basically the little Arnies are little like alien type squid creatures inside these little jars. You shake them up, you throw them, and they have tentacles that fly out. Within these tentacles, basically it just distracts the zombies and kills them and works way better than a monkey bomb ever wanted to. So with that, the little Arnies are very cool along with they have a cool upgrade process you can do. Um, and yeah, so basically as I said, the box isn't much to it. I mean you can get the typical like ray gun and stuff like that. but. Nothing amazing in the box, but the swords, guys. The swords are a very amazing feature. Essentially, a wonder weapon. Um, I mean, specialist weapons are supposed to be a little under the wonder weapon, but these do very, very amazing. Basically, what the swords are is the original sword is just uh, you can slice with it, and it obviously the damage on it will go down as the zombies get stronger, but you can slam it down for a dead wire type uh, wonder waff effect where it'll shoot out like electricity and it'll take out a herd of zombies. Or you can go through the little steps and upgrade it into where it's going to make you the full out Apothecan sword, which is essentially way more powerful and it has a little sword that comes off the side and will chase you around and slice out the zombies heads as you're going through. So with that, it's very cool and something that is very helpful in those high rounds. Um, moving on forward to more of this gameplay perspective, we had one of the best perks in Call of Duty Zombies introduced in this map, and that would be Widow's Wine. Widow's Wine is one amazing perk. Essentially what Widow's Wine does is, um, when you get hit, it will shoot the Widow's Wine grenade, essentially freezing the zombie by you, and, uh, helps you get in out of clutch situations and stuff like that. Um, a cool thing about this map is that you, when you have Widow's Wine, and then you get the Rocket Shield, which is a very cool shield, along with Jug, it does make it a little hard to go down, so it's definitely helpful, but those high rounds still will get to you. So, Rocket Shield is another cool feature in the map. You have a shield piece in every one of the three districts. Um, once again, Canales, Footlight, and Waterfront, one piece in each, which makes for a really cool shield, and it is a Rocket Shield. Not saying the Rocket Shield is the most useful, but it is still a cool feature. So with that, um, moving on forward, the final and biggest thing, um, for Wonder Weapon. I mean, Wonder Weapon is a big thing in Zombies maps. It can make or break a Zombies map. Um, and basically, within Shadows of Evil, we have the Apothecan Servant. And the Apothecan Servant is made from a Margo Heart, a Margo Tentacle, and then the Exeal Matter from the Bees, or the Meatballs. And basically, what this Wonder Weapon is, is you shoot, it's an alien type Wonder Weapon. It has like even blinking eyes on it. Very cool looking. And you will shoot it out, and it'll shoot out a black hole that sucks the zombies in. And originally when the map first came out, they had inside of it the upgraded Apothecan Servant, which we later came on to see in Revelations. And a lot of people still are like, they don't like that it's not there, but after playing Revelations and Shadows of Evil, I'm so glad it's not there. I feel like Revelations was a ruined map just because of the Apothecan Servant's upgrade and that it made it too easy. Anybody can get to round 100, and we don't want that. Shadows of Evil still ended up being a challenge to get to round 100. I did it after many attempts. It took me a lot of practice to it, but I finally did it. And I was very excited about that. It was a, it was a very cool experience to do it on such an awesome map. With this map being said, this was also the one that introduced a lot of stuff. Um, be, that being the first map, essentially the of the dead map of the game. And if you don't know what I mean by that, is you think of DLC 2 of Black Ops 1 being Call of the Dead, where you had the four uh, special cast and then the uh, four in Mob of the Dead. So these are just the off character set and this was essentially the of the dead map as I said. So this being Shadows of Evil, it just was the of the dead map but was placed first on the list. 
and so yeah it definitely came in as i said it had widow's wine it introduced double pack of punches which were very awesome and it just overall gave such an amazing gameplay to it you had over this whole big map it is a very big map i meant i should have mentioned that from the beginning but you do have these trams that can send you to each district and within these people at first i remember when the game was first coming out they were getting the vibe of a uh vibe of like a um, another transit bus and that's nothing of what it's like it is just a tram that you'll take and you'll get out exit it and yeah it's basically as like that um, but when you talk about how big the map really is you have the four different districts but then upon those districts you also have below the streets you have the rift which is essentially the subway station where you can then break open another wall into the big uh, pack a bunch room or the ritual room um, and then even past that you have um, like a top layer to these maps too where over these districts you have different parts where you have different rooms and different bridges you can walk over um, just making it for an amazing looking map an amazing design map um, and basically when you do the final ritual you will have a squid in the sky it does give it a cool looking uh, vibe to the map as you have this giant squid over the city along with it. when you do the ritual you do see the mob of the dead plane fly over that's another tie towards mob of the dead just all these cool features really make it such an amazing map and the reason I feel like this map is so underrated is because basically when you jump into Black Ops 3 they should have launched it with the giant they should have had the giant at least with the disc I, I at least I personally think so um, basically the um, Shadow of the Evil is definitely a map that's not for everyone it isn't for everyone in the sense of if you're not an advanced zombies player you'll hate this map that was me I wasn't that advanced in the zombies and I said I hated the map because I didn't know what to do but once I figured out what to do I came to absolutely love this map and something I just ask is if you guys haven't really given this a shot or you just honestly have bashed it since the beginning just please search stuff up look at it and I promise you an amazing time this map has been one of my probably most played maps over the past year and a half of Black Ops 3. It's a map that I can always feel I can come back to and play anytime, whether that's solo or with a bunch of friends. Um, doing the Easter egg was absolutely one of the best memories I have with Viral Clan. Um, basically, all of us going getting together, and it wasn't like we made it the first time. It took build up, so we're trying different teams. Of different people trying to do this and basically and we had our four main guys that be me viral edge along with viral green viral storms and viral iced we came to defeat the shadow man and beat the shadows of evil easter egg and get the dr edward richtoff and cutscene where basically he takes it and leaves takes the summoning key and leaves and it just makes it for some amazing memories on shadows of evil and that's why i'm so passionate about this map and i hate to see people say they hate it one of the best maps uh, I think anybody who really gives it a shot can agree it's one of the best maps. But in my unpopular opinion, for some people, it is the best map in Call of Duty Zombies to date. Obviously, we have future maps coming in. And I know it's typical for everyone to say Origins or Mob the Dead. But honestly, this map is something else. It's really unreal. And it's a map that I can pretty much play. If I really wanted to, I could play it probably every day and have the most fun on it. It just... It's a map that never really gets old to me, and it's a map that I can always come back to. And it's a map that, for say in a year and a half, when uh, Treyarch's next game is coming out, it is still a game, okay, honestly, even go as far as to when Treyarch's next game is done. I feel like Shadows of Evil is still a map that I will come back to and play, whether that's with friends doing the Easter egg again, or just playing by myself for a high round attempt. Honestly, guys, that's been it for the video today. I just I was really passionate about Shadows of Evil and I thought I should just give my total opinion of this map and why I think it is personally the best map in Call of Duty Zombies. So obviously this is all my opinion. I don't make opinions for you guys. You guys have your opinions. If you want you can tell me your favorite maps down below. But honestly I was just going through why I think this map is so amazing and why I'm so passionate about it. But yeah guys that's been it for the video today. Hope you guys did all enjoy. Make sure to like, a comment, and subscribe. Have an awesome day, everybody. Peace out, everybody, and see ya. Boots on a Saturday night.